Hello, players who buy a new set of dice for every character. And DMs who get a little too into rolling for MILFs. You sound rough. <laughs> yeah, I am rough. I'm recovering from a upper respiratory infection, otherwise known as a URI. Welcome back to Table Talk! Yeah, welcome back. I'm Robert, that's Madison. Uh, and today we have made the decision to go ahead and do character sheets um, and rolling in combat and shit like that just with uh, the theater of mind because the setup is jank as fuck and we don't really have the ability to um, do a video like we would like to. And we're not vloggers, we're not YouTubers. I mean, so. I mean, we might be in the future, but for now we're a couple of college students using video equipment and audio equipment that has been loaned to us. So we're not going to fuck with the setup. Okay. Uh, that and... For now. Shout out to our supervisor. Um, he is slow to respond sometimes. So <laughs> I love you, Tommy. Um, anyways, so today we're going to walk you guys through um, how to make a character, like how to physically do it. So without mm -hmm. the audio setup, you might be wondering, Robert, how am I going to follow along? Well... We're going to narrate, and I'm going to encourage you to pull up the free Wizards of the Coast 5th Edition character sheet um, that will literally pop up if you just Google 5th Edition character sheet. Yeah. It's the first one. The PDF is also interactive, so you can actually put in all of your information right there on the screen. Which is uh, really nice. I don't understand why every PDF yeah. in the world is not interactive. And then uh, you can just print it off when you're done. Yeah. Um, instead of having, and there is something to printing it off before and then like having to physically do it. But I mean, it's we live nice, in a but digital I've got, age. Yeah, and I've got big handwriting and there's little spaces. So it's easier for me to already have that stuff like printed so I don't yeah. have to write yeah, it yeah, in. 100%. Um, so anyways... It starts with making a character sheet. Um, we've talked about this. Hopefully you guys have remembered some of the things we've talked about. You're going to talk to your DM and figure out what your setting is before you start making a character. I mean, there are plenty of people who will have characters in the bank. Madison is one of them. I have so Dakota many. Dakota is one of them. Um, I am kind of have a few, but like they're only concepts. Um, they're not like Mine are characters. mostly concept as Yeah, well. but you also have some that have like name, class, yeah, play style, that's personality. Concept. That's concept. I have filled out the physical sheet. That's not concept. My so concept it's still a concept. Like, I want to make a guy that throws knives. Oh, mine's like, no, I have the entire I'll character tailor it to the out. out. Yeah. No, I no, just no. have Your concept is the full thing. No, because I don't have, I don't, I haven't rolled for it. I haven't picked like Yeah, but I mean, you, basi you basically have. Yeah, mentally, uh -huh. but not it's like. the same goddamn thing. It's not the same thing. Anyways, um, to, to ease setting, um, instead of trying to drum up something that's like wholly new and creative, we're just going to stick with traditional Sword Coast. Um, shout out to Wizards. It's basically just the most generic, uh, not to say that it's bland, but it is the most traditional um, fantasy setting in 5th edition. Yes. There are lots of maps. Every location on that map has a fully fleshed out mini map in and of itself. Backstory going back they've, hundreds of years. Yeah, no, they've put out a ridiculous amount of content for pretty much everything on the Sword Coast. Yeah. Um, so there's no lack of like things that you can do there. Uh, my first campaign was set on the Sword Coast, and even my current campaign is also set in the Sword Coast, um, or the campaign that I'm currently playing in, as opposed to the one that I'm DMing, is set in uh, Waterdeep, which is like Gotham, but Sword Coast, uh, which, that not not to be confused with Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate is actually a semi-decent place. Uh, Waterdeep is like everyone stabbing each other and making business deals and yeah. run by a giant fucking eye with other eyes. Shout out the Lords of Waterdeep game. Yeah, yeah, board game that my fiance bought me. Um, it's wonderful. Anyways, Madison is going to walk through. I'm going to um, be a player. Yeah, she's going to be a player, and I'm just going to be DM pretty much uh, doing nothing. Uh, I'm really just here to narrate and to kind of talk about some of the decisions that are being made. And explain what I'm doing. Yeah, and explain um, what she's doing. So where this would differ from, say, our uh, superhero campaign the character is much more of a conversation um, between myself and Madison as opposed to Madison just picking out shit and putting it on a piece of paper. Yes. Um, it's talking about the setting. It's talking about the kinds of decisions that, th that they'll be making, um, the kind of combat that'll be most prevalent, 
Uh, like, I'm not going to have her make a character that's a swashbuckler that gets advantage on ships if we are in a purely land-based campaign. You know what I'm saying? Like, and yes, in theory, I could roll that in, um, but why would I, you know? Oh, I mean, I guess, why would I? It sounds kind of like an asshole thing to say. I would, because I, I'm a DM that tries to make sure that my players have fun, but uh, to an extent, right, I'm not going to have her build a fucking character that is going to be useless in the setting that we're playing yeah, in. I'm not going to pick a sea elf if we're doing something that isn't a completely landlocked Yeah, or setting. like set in the sky. Yeah. Like have fun water bending. Or an Eric Cobra who's like doing something entirely on a ship. Which actually, that might not or be Or like bad, but... splunking, like a, a character that can fly in like a, a cave setting. Yeah. Like, it's like that's cool. not super... You can fly to the oh. yeah, top of the ledge, but like... Which, yeah. to be fair, flying is one of the hardest things to not say is, like, an amazing trait to have. Yeah, it's so good. Flying is broken no matter how you have it. Yeah, um, it's... Being able to get aerial advantage and just say, uh, the fuck fact that you difficult can just terrain. Say, no, fuck you to difficult terrain to enemies because you can obstacles. just go through wherever yeah. you want to go through. Awesome. So um, I'm going to pull out the player's handbook, and we're going to walk through this step by step. Um you can look up Player's Handbook. I definitely recommend purchasing it from Wizards of the Coast. Yes, you should um, always buy the source book. You should definitely just also look it up and see what links pop up. Um, maybe Who knows what's out there? Don't throw PDF in front of it because that would be a scandalous thing to do. Oh yeah, that'd be illegal. So the first several pages of this are kind of pointless. They talk about how to be a DM and how to play the game, which if you're listening to this, hopefully you kind of know how to do that. By now. So now we're going to get to chapter one, step-by-step -step character creation. So the first thing a Madison's going to do is choose a race. We've got a whole episode on races. Yeah, uh, if you haven't checked that out where we talk about all of them, I'm going to go uh, pretty basic. I don't think I've actually played a character this race before, but I'm going to go with a tiefling. So mm -hmm. um, in the player's handbook, it'll tell you when you look up um, those races, it will show you like all of the features and bonuses that you'll get for that. I like to kind of have that pulled up to the side mm -hmm. um, so I can like add those things as I go through. Yeah. But um, right now I'm just going to do Blood of Asmodeus Tiefling. And I don't mind shouting out like uh, wiki dot sites just because I think those are... Um like, it's not even a thing of, like, buying it from Wizards of the Coast. I think it's just there are some websites that have it formulated better. And so this isn't me saying, hey, guys, uh, cheap Wizards of the Coast out of their money. No, it it's is just, just a nice, like, yeah, format of Yeah, it's just a nicer format. Just go to D&D, like, Wikidot, just look up, like, Tiefling race list, whatever, uh, and start clicking. Yeah. Uh, and then you're going to fill out your race up in, like, the the top right corner. It'll have a little, like box up there that'll say like class and level background player name and then a little, a little spot for race yep so we're up in that top right box right now mm -hmm. so what is blood of bloodline of asmodeus then uh it is let me click on that what does it give uh, you intelligence increases by one and you get uh the thaumaturgy cantrip and once you reach third level you get hellish rebuke and fifth level you get darkness and then you get all of those for free um as long as you have a long rest um, and charisma is your spell casting ability. Okay, so plus one to intelligence, and what else? Uh, then the regular tiefling features are going to be charisma is going to be plus two. Okay, so and then it's also going to give you your speed, which is thirty feet. So behind the scenes here, I'm also following along. This is because um, inevitably in every character creation session, a number will get fudged, or we will forget to add it up the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so me following along with them is. Oftentimes, the easiest way to make sure that doesn't happen, uh, or making sure the bonuses are applying the right way, such and such. So, it's also going to let me know that I've got dark vision, so I'm going to pop that in my little like features area. Yeah. So on that right side of the sheet, if you have it pulled up at home, you'll see it says features and traits, and you'll just jot down dark vision. So um, and hellish resist, uh, hellish resistance, which means I'm going to have resistance to fire damage. Yeah. 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 Um, so dark vision basically means that you can see, I think it's what, 30 feet in darkness? Yes. Yeah, so you can see... 60 feet. 60 feet in darkness, uh, which is crazy because it basically just means you have like 60... Now, what this also means, though, is that during the day, your vision is only 30. That means that only at night, your vision is 60. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Swag. 
I think so. I, like, I trust you more than I do. I mean, or unless your vision myself. states otherwise, I would imagine that, um, yeah, because I think the... I think the normal... Yeah, the normal one, I'm pretty sure, is is it 60 or 30? Mm, I'm going to look It'll that up It'll be fine. Oh, we're Anyways, no, I'm just going to detour while you continue to, to okay. do what you're doing. So, um, so I went ahead and a, wrote that down. I'm going to write... She's also picked a sub-race. Yes. Of um, which there are so many. <laughs> And then I'm going to go ahead and write down on features Infernal Legacy. And I'm going to put the way I like to do it for things that have like actual features. Um, I put a little asterisk next to it. So I know like to go back and like actually write down the details of that. But I don't always do that when I'm like in like the character creation mode. Because like I know what Dark Vision is, but I've also been playing for a while. I know Hellish Resistance. Um, mm. so I don't need to write down like the details of that. It'll also tell you your size, but that doesn't really matter. Um, mm. and then having that little asterisk will let me know to go and like put that stuff into cantrip and spells later, which you can do now if you want to. Mm. I just don't like to. <laughs> so, um, fun fact about vision. Apparently you can see two miles in any direction. What uh, the fuck? On a clear day. When it comes to combat encounters, they cap it at 60 for most PCs. Okay. Um, yeah. Two miles is... That's so interesting. Anyways, uh, traditional vision is 60 feet. Dark vision basically says you get to see in dark, but you can only see black and white. Um, yeah. So, like, you've got night vision goggles on, but instead of it being green, it's, like, gray. Yeah. Awesome. So next we're going to go to class, which, in my opinion, is the harder decision out of the two. Yes. Because um, your class is going to determine pretty much everything. Uh, I mean, your race is like, that's more of a, in my opinion, race is more of a role. Oh my god. Holy fuck. Um, equipment just broke. Can we like pause? Hey, this shit sucks. Do you have something you want to send in to make it better? Criticisms, topics you'd like to see discussed, or an advertisement you'd like to run? Maybe you even want to sponsor an episode. If so, shoot us a message at mc460 at evansville.edu or DM us on Instagram at Crescent Magazine. Or we'll never get better like these fucking guys. So, we're back. Um, holy fuck. Well, you all heard I it. I don't know what you all are going to hear. You but... all are going to hear part of that, but not all of it. Basically, a mic just tried to fucking RKO Madison uh, and took her box down with it. So a very large box of dice that was just open. To on be the table. fair, well, you so this is you need dice when you're rolling for a character. So she brought a fucking chest. So I brought here. I'm gonna shake it so you can hear. I want you. I want you to know there's only one die that you will roll for this entire thing, except for your hit dice, which is a D6. This bitch brought every dice she owns. No, I have a box of ugly dice at home that I never use. That's and they're disgusting. the ones that are like brown and speckled and gray and like red. Okay, and all she only brought the basic the pretty ones. dice in a treasure chest um, when she only needs like six of them. Yeah, but I <laughs> when I thought we were going to be recording, I didn't know which dice I wanted to use on camera. And so I was like, well, I have some that are like the color of table talk. They're like my table talk dice. Mm -hmm. So I was like, maybe I'll use those. But then I was also like, no, I just bought a bunch of new dice from this website that I'm going to shout out, Viridian Gaming. I got uh, four really nice sets of dice for like $36 total. And that was including shipping. So really great deal. But I didn't know which ones to use. So and then they've outgrown my previous dice box, which was already large. Yeah. She's a dice goblin. I am don't like that term. A dice goblin. I don't agree with that. Well, language. I think anybody else that saw it would call it what it is. But you can live in La La Land where having a fucking chest of dice is in a dice goblin. All in the same color scheme as well. Well, that's just because I'm not going to say that. Never mind. Yeah, don't say that. I'm not going to say that. I know what he was going to say. She he was going to be was mean to me. I wasn't going to be mean. I was just going to state a fact of life. Okay. Okay. Anyways, um, choose a class, Madison. <laughs> Sorcerer. So. I Listen, if we're just doing like a straightforward, easy character creation, I know uh, Sorcerer is like the back of my sorry. hand. I only groan because Sorcerer is just, just a Because I fucked him in the ass with Sorcerer so many times. You fuck anybody in the ass with a Sorcerer, okay? 
No. Guess which uh, subclass I'm going to choose. Pick a fucking different one. I'm going to choose. Quit being a basic bitch and pick uh, listen, a different Listen, it's a very popular pick, so I'm just showing people. Um, I'm going to go with Wild Magic. Wild Magic Sorcerer. <laughs> okay, calm the fuck down. Wild um, Magic. And is I can't this control is an example. my magic. So I'm going to fill out my little class and level up at the top. There's not really a spot for subclass. No, um, you so just got to kind of write it next to it. In parentheses, and then I do like a little yeah. abbreviation. So I, I just I hate the w class down. and level are in the same, like they're right next to each other. Yeah. So, it's kind of difficult. Especially with subclasses. Like you got a tiny ass line for those that are following at home. You got a small line, dude. It's very little. We'll go up to level three because that's where I start my, my players at. And that'll give us... Um, some actual like role potential. Yeah. So. So uh, she's picked that her is race. She's picked her class. Should I go ahead and mull my hit dice? Um. What is next? So then it says talks about levels. No, it wants us to do. Looks like it wants us to do ability scores first. Okay. And we'll do hit points after. No, no, maybe it is. We no. go out of order maybe when we it make. Wants our... us to do hit points. Let's do hit points. We'll do hit points. So, yeah, each race has, um, or is it class? Which one is it? It's class, right? Oh, no, I do have to do ability scores because you add your constitution modifier. Oh, yeah. yeah. So let's roll for ability scores. So, hopefully quick. you would have caught that if you're following along. Uh, it, it says Don't listen need, to us, actually. We don't know what we're doing. your constitution modifier for sorcerers whenever you roll your, um, your hit points, your hit dice. You add your con mod. And you'll figure out what a con modifier is here in a second. So there are several, 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 several ways to do ability scores. Um, one of them is called point buy, where basically you just get to put your points where you want them. I think they um, need to add up to 27 total. Yeah, they need to add up to 27 total. I'm not going to do that because that's not the fun way. Uh, and then there are several other ways which basically involve rolling dice. The nice way is to roll 66 and to take the highest three. So it essentially mm -hmm. gives you um, the highest chance. I don't do that. I say roll four and knock out the lowest um, because, I don't know, I think that's more fun. And if we're playing a game where dice control your fate, quit trying to cheat the fucking dice by rolling two. I like to cheat the system. She does. Um, but the way that I do it uh, is, yeah, we'll start with that. So just right. go ahead and roll your... I've got 4d6 here, so I'm just going to roll them at the same time. Really, you only need 1d6 if you're doing a sorcerer, because that's going to be the only thing you're going to roll for, and you can use that same one and roll it over and over. I'm not going to do that. So I rolled a 4, a 6, a 3, and a 4. So not bad. So I'm going to knock out that 3. And that's going to be a what? Um, four plus six is, you could just hear us do math in real time. Four yeah. plus six is 10 uh -huh. plus four is 14. So 14, 14 is, is not bad. a lot higher than average. So average is 10 average, yes. uh, dead average is 10. Uh, the highest I think you can get is six times three is eight. You were looking at the wrong person. Six times three is 18. The yes. highest you can get is an 18, which yes. by the way, that would Insane. mean at <laughs> level one, you could potentially have a 20, which is the highest possible score in your choice uh, yeah. um, of of abilities, which, which is, is wild, which is crazy. Um, uh, 25 is like God level. Yeah, you can't demigod. get over 20 unless there's like divine intervention. Yeah, there's actually a rule like that says that you can't, there's nothing that can push you over 20 with the exception of like magical items, Yeah, um, which will give you like a plus six to strength and you're already at 20, so now you have 26. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to let Robert write down all these numbers and then yep. I'm going to figure out where I want to put them at the end. So I'm going to roll the next set. Uh, six, 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 six wow. and one. So ho 18. There's an 18. So Holy, I've at... never rolled like that in my life, and I'm kind of upset that this is just an example character so for this podcast right now. So you're going to do this right a total now. of six times, by the way. Um, five, high roll, three, 14. five, and four. Another 14. It? Another 14. Okay, so we have three, three really high Why rolls. is this rolling better than any character I've ever made? Six. Five and a two. One and two. So six, five, and two. So thirteen. Uh that's eleven, twelve. Yeah. I can do math, guys. I can't. We got two more. Uh one, three, five, and four. So four, three, and five. So that's gonna be in twelve. Yeah. So twelve is one above average. Um two, five, three, four, five, five, three, and one. Five, five, and a three, thirteen. 
So 14, 18, 14, 13, 12, 13. So the way that I at all things the way that I do uh, my rolling as a DM is that if somebody rolls abysmally low, I will let them roll those dice again, but they keep whatever they get on that second roll. So let's say Madison rolled like a fucking three, four ones on the unlikely <laughs> chance that that happens, and she now has a three. A um, three is going to be like a negative four to whatever you roll. Yeah, with that you ability. can have negative in ability scores, by the way. Uh, or modifiers. So I would say you can either take average, which is 10, or you can roll again. A lot of people will choose to roll again because it's fun and it's a gamble. But if she rolled again, in in the unlikely chance she rolled four ones again, she would be keeping three. Um, it's so brutal. However, I have never let somebody keep a roll under nine uh, because I don't think that's fun. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, I like to be dice controlled, whatever, whatever. But also, I'm a nice person. At I think heart. it could be really funny in strength for like a spellcaster. Yeah, have, like, like that much of a if negative. It's thematic and it fits whatever. Like, if we already have a plan to make them like brain dead, then sure, we'll keep your three and put it in intelligence, whatever. Um, but like, if you're supposed to be a well-rounded character, I'm not gonna let you keep a seven. We'll just keep rolling until you get like at least a nine. Um, or you can take average and go with 10. But anyways, yeah. she has uh, all across the board some really good scores. 12 is the lowest she got, which is only one above average. Um, so not, or two above average, I guess. So a 12, two 13s, a 14, a 14, and an 18. So now I get to choose where they go. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to keep in mind where my bonuses are from my race features. Um, so I know that I'm going to get a plus two to charisma from being a tiefling, and I'm going to get a plus one to intelligence. I'm also going to keep in mind that as a sorcerer, my spellcasting um, class is, or like my spellcasting ability is going to be charisma. Yep. So it would make the most sense for me to put that 18 in charisma. However, I'm also going to be getting a plus two to that, which would put me at 20 at level one. Which would make sense, though. Yeah. But also, you can do a 14 and have a 16. Yes. So there are decisions to be made. Um and I hear you say, what about if I'm playing a non-spellcasting class, like Barbarian? Strength. Does it fucking matter there? Yes, it does, because your roll to hit um, is directly affected by your strength modifier. So every class, generally speaking, is going to have one ability, uh, one ability score, sometimes two, that are uh, really important to everything that they do. So, like, Paladin, Wisdom, and Charisma are huge. Um, both of those can be used as your spellcasting modifier, uh, so it really just depends on which one you want to lay on, and you're going to be making a lot of wisdom saving throws uh, as well, generally speaking. Um, things like insight checks, things like religion checks are directly based off wisdom as well. Um, so, like, those are really important for a Paladin. But if you look at a Sorcerer, uh, generally, like, Charisma... Um, Maybe, like, dexterity to try and avoid getting hit because you're not going to be very combat-focused mm -hmm. um, are, are pretty important there. But, yeah, with a plus two to charisma, uh, with the tiefling bonus, me as a DM, I would say fuck it and put the 18 in charisma and just have a 20. Okay. Um, I didn't know if it would be easier just for, like, purposes of explaining no, to not put a 20 I there. But I'm going to put a 20 there. I think having a 20 for any character is phenomenal. Um, and you already have high scores, like, as it is. There's no reason not to take the 20. Yeah. Because it means that you're never going to have to take a feature that gives you a bonus to charisma. You're never going to have to worry about getting a magical item to boost your charisma. It means that your spell DC is going to be ridiculously high off the bat, uh, which is the difficulty you have to roll against um, for spells. But we'll get to spell DC in a little um, bit. When you're filling in your ability scores on the character sheet, there's like a big box and then there's a little tiny one, in, like a little circle in it. Yep. Now, you would think you would put the big score, the big number, in the big box. And then your little plus, which is going to be your um, Are you actually your modifier. to like put that, put a number in that box? Yeah, that is where you're supposed to put the actual number and then you put... Put your bonus. I can't write that small. in the big one. Yeah, it's Are that's why I prefer ass? typing. I I'm not the biggest fan of the way that the character sheet is laid out. So you put the twenty in that little tiny circle, and then um for nah. if it's a twenty, then you would get a plus five. Um, and right so you would this. write the plus five big. So the way that I do it on this, because <laughs> fuck that, is I write the big number on the line, and then I write plus, and then the number to the right of the. That's on saving word. throws, isn't it? Oh shit, that is on saving throws. Oh, you're talking about the. 
I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> so on the for those, Listen, I'm even also seasoned confused. veterans. Yeah. will like it. So we, if you're looking at your character in this sheet, day and age, a lot of the time you're not going to be filling out a character no. sheet with pencil and paper, which is why you're just going to listen to the two of us struggle. Yeah. Through so this. if you're looking at the left side of the D and D character sheet, you're going to see there's there's going to be a bunch of boxes on the left. Not to be confused with the boxes to the right of that. It's going to say strength, dex, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. They're going to have little ovals on the bottom of those boxes. So the way that I've always done it is I've always put the big number in the box, and I've always put my plus in the little oval because that makes the most sense to me. Okay, I heard the opposite. No, I've always done that because that to me just makes sense. I also think it makes sense. Put the little number in the little box or in the little oval, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so the way that you get modifiers now that we've have our first score placed, so we're going to go ahead and put our 20 in charisma. The way that you do this now, um, is your modifiers are basically, um, it's, what is it? It's like something minus something. There's an equation. I don't know what the equation is. There's an equation However, for it and I can't remember what it is. Um, oh, I'm I know what it is. Chart. It's minus 10, um, yeah, it's like minus 10 divided by something or something, something divided by something. Uh, my vote is you just Google ability score yeah. Sorry. modifiers. There's a math to it. And I IV. Yeah, ignore me. You can just do that. You can just Google I don't it. do math. Um, so I put my largest number next. When I'm like doing my arrangements, I like to do my lowest number next, which is a 12, I believe, right? Um, yes, it is. So I'm going to take that 12 and I'm going to put that in strength because as a sorcerer, I'm... Probably I'm a spell casting class who's not I gonna be like doing a bunch of that's so, that's like a full equation. So anyway, I'm putting twelve in strength. To determine an ability modifier without consulting the table for those of you that like to do it um, you know, like the non calculator way, you subtract ten from the ability score and then divide the total by two and then you round down. So let's say she put twenty in charisma or eighteen in charisma, which would bump her up to twenty, because remember she's got that plus room uh, plus two from tiefling. Um we're gonna Subtract 10 from that, so 10, and then follow along, do some basic math with me, 10 divided by 2, 5. So her modifier for that score is going to be plus 5. My modifier for 12 is going to be plus 1, and then I believe the, how many 13s do I have? So I've already fucked this character sheet up. Um, it's fine. So bad. That's so why we printed extras. Plus 5, so then you're putting your 12 in strength. Also, write your character sheets in pencil. Yeah, I'm doing mine um, in pen because that's what I had on me. Anyways, we're going to do a 12 in strength because strength doesn't fucking matter for sorcerers. What's the next one? Um, which, again, do some math with me. 12 minus 10 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So she has a plus 1. The chart is so much modifier. quicker for me. No, I, I think the math is fine. I failed multiple math classes. So the next lowest score you have is two thirteens. All right. So I'm probably going to put that in... I'm going to remember and not make the same mistake that I have in the past and remember that intelligence is where Arcana is. Yeah. So I'm not going to put it there. However, this is going to lead to so, kind of a, a shitty situation. I want a high... I like to put a bit more in dex. Yeah. So I'm probably going to put that 13 in constitution and wisdom. Which makes sense um, for the character that she's building. So then, again, let's do some math here. 13 minus 10 is 3. 3 divided by 2 is, round down, 1. I'm just going to let you do the math portion. Plus 1. So something else to keep in mind here, and you'll pick this up the more you play the game and the more characters you make. Um, Something you'll want to keep in mind is what kind of roles you think you want to kind of make with your character. So let's say I'm going to play a, like, animal-attuned sorcerer who, like, uses Magic of the Wilds but isn't... um, like is more archaic and less like nature bound as opposed to being a druid. Um, animal handling is a fantastic uh, like skill to have um, for that character in terms of flavor and background, but it's wisdom based. Wisdom isn't necessarily a high score that I need to have for my sorcerer. However, for flavor, for background, for the character I'm building, maybe I want to go ahead and put my 14 or my 13. Um, in wisdom, maybe that's what I want to do because it, mm-hmm. it might not necessarily make sense for uh, the straight up like min maxing character I'm building, but for flavor and for background, it does. Yeah. Um, and so don't don't be afraid to not take the min max route and try and like perfectly place your score so that you have like the best class possible. Also, place your scores based on like thematics and character and background and role play. 
Yeah. Because that I'll also say, was fun. Like the thing that she just talked about, having a low intelligence score, that's because <laughs> she, we were playing a, a campaign. She played a sorcerer and did not have a high intelligence score. But I like, had a negative. I straight up, like, it was like a neg. It was not a negative one. I think it was a negative two. And it was a very magic heavy, arcana heavy campaign. So she just kept having to make arcana checks and for just everything could because not... I was a sorcerer. So he was like, yeah, arcana check. Yeah. And looking at it, I, I mean, I probably could have done insight instead. I uh, mean, it was still abysmally low. Yeah. Because the wisdom also wasn't high. So that's just kind of one of those things to keep in mind. Like, yeah. if you're a magic character, yes, you can be stupid. But also, sometimes you're going to have to make an arcana save or an arcana check or an insight check or a religion check. And both yeah. of those are intelligence-based throws or wisdom-based throws. Personally, there's kind of two things that people Pick like normally like dump stat, and that's either intelligence or strength, almost yeah. always. Yeah. Or I always dump intelligent or not intelligence i always dump strength because my i don't play very many martial characters yeah um because i like magic um or constitution a lot of people dump constitution too yeah because they don't really give a shit so we got that cool so we are three scores down we have our 213s placed and we have our 18 placed so next we're going to go oh and our 12 yeah, so we've got the 14s left, so which I'm going to put in the two that are left, yeah. so dex and intelligence, and then I'm going to get another bonus, um, one to intelligence, so my intelligence score is going to be 15, and Let's my dexterity is going to be 14. Both are going to be plus two. Yeah. I spoiled it. 14 minus 10 is four. Four divided by two is two. You're really loving that you found the equation for this. I like the you? math. I did the equations last time, too, when I was doing your guys' uh, hero sheets. Yeah, I, do the I, all I time. don't do math, and I refuse to. So now let's roll hit points. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the rest of that later. Um, oh, Jesus Christ, there's so much to figure out when you're first making a character. I know. What it's overwhelming. It Truly, you can just, like, get an app or, like, fill it in online, and it'll plug in a lot of this stuff for oh, you. Inspiration but... die. I was like, what the fuck is inspiration? Um, so for hit dice, it's 1d6 per sorcerer level, and that'll change depending on which class you choose. Yeah. So your yeah, your hit dice are basically dice that are given to you or assigned by your class, and every time you level up, you're going to roll however many dice it tells you to roll based on your class. Um, so, so yeah, for sorcerer, hit points at the first level, or beyond the first level, it's your... Um, or no, at at the first level, you're right, 1d6 plus your con mod. So well, first level, it's 6 plus your con. Uh, okay. And then every level above that is so yeah. You have a starting hit point at first level your con modifier. It's to keep people from rolling a fucking one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so at level one, she would have. So let's go to her constitution. We're gonna see she has a plus one, so she would have seven health at the first level, which is pretty normal for a first level sorcerer. Yeah. Um. So then we're gonna go to second level. So go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Four. Uh, four. Not bad. So then we're gonna add. Or as it says, 1d6 per sorcerer level. So would you roll 2d6? I would do 1d6 plus your constitution modifier per sorcerer level after for Oh. Yeah, it says hit points at higher levels. 1d per sorcerer level after the first. So I'm assuming you roll more and more d6. No, I think it's saying more con modifiers. So I... Oh, no, because it says your hit dice is 1d6 per sorcerer level. So your level... You're level one, so you would roll 1d6. So go ahead and roll 1d6. Well, I rolled well, it before. Well, you already had a four. a four. So four plus your constitution modifier, right? One. So. Four five. plus one, five. <laughs> so we're going to take her from seven health to 12 health. Yeah, 12 health. And then I'd do it again. So then at the third level, you would have two swords for levels, which are leveling up to three. You would have okay. two, so you would roll 2d6. Figuring things out as we go, folks. Four, five, six, plus one, seven. Seven. So then we're going to give her another seven health. It's going to take her up to 20. Cool. Or no, she was at 12. 19. I 19. 19. So 19 health at third level is not bad. Um, um, so up Read the on, fine print, folks. On the little thing where it says current hit points in the middle, like, top of the character sheet, it says hit point maximum. Yeah. Write your yeah, 19 up there, the current hit points. Fucking faint font, man. I can't even And this is it. why you do it in pencil is because when you're in combat, you're, like, you're going to yeah. get hit, and it's going to change. All um, right. So let's, what does it ask us to do next in the player's handbook? So we have proficiency bonus. Um, okay. 
So the table that appears in your class description shows your proficiency bonus. What is your proficiency bonus? My proficiency bonus is two. So you will, uh, when you look up a class, you will have a table that basically shows you how to advance all the way from first level to the 20th level. So can you scroll back up on that? Yeah. Um, she has a source for a table pulled up. So on this table, uh, across a little bit more, uh, you know, it'll say level, proficiency, bonus, source rate points, features, cantrip, spells, known, and then it'll list uh, first through ninth. So at the first level, um, or well, let's go line by line. Uh, level one, it says one, proficiency bonus is plus two, source rate points, zero, features, spell casting, um, and what does it say? Sorcerer's, sorcerer's origin, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically subclass. Yeah. And then it says that you'll know four cantrips, you'll know two spells, and those spells will be at the first level. So we'll get to spells here in a second. But what that means is, on your little proficiency bonus, which is going to be to the right of your ability scores, if you're looking at the sheet, it's to the right of the strength score, you'll put in a plus two. Um, your proficiency bonus will level up with you over time. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, at the starting level, it's two. And it's not going to change for five levels. Um, it, it tends to hardly ever yeah. move because proficiency bonus is used for a lot of different things yeah um attack rolls like using weapons that you're proficient in um you're gonna add your proficiency bonus attack rolls skills that, that you're proficient with, in you're gonna add proficiency, proficiency bonus, bonus ability check saving throws anything that you're proficient in you're gonna add your proficiency bonus um Which, and then saving throws for dcs as well also are gonna add your proficiency bonus like mm -hmm. your proficiency bonus basically says um this is your class Anything that is related to your class that you would be proficient in or have a deep understanding of, you get a bonus to that. So my bonus in saving throws for a sorcerer is going to be constitution and charisma. And that's going to be listed on the table. Um, so I'm going to do my charisma is going to be a plus five. And then I'm going to add my proficiency bonus to that because I'm proficient in it. So it's going to be a plus seven, which is incredibly good for a low level character. Um, and my constitution is only a plus one, and then I'm going to get my proficiency bonus, so it's going to be a plus three, because I'm going to add that plus two to it as well. And then for the rest of them, I'm just going to do whatever my um, my modifier is for that ability. So for strength, it's going to be a plus one. Um, for dexterity, it's going to be a plus two. Yeah. So you're for saving intelligence, throws. it's going to be a plus two, and for wisdom, it's going to be a plus one. And I will find a way to like in the description of this episode, like upload the finished character sheet, where if you want to follow along and see like what we are talking about on my sheet, yeah. um, we'll figure out a way to like um, scan and upload it. So your just to walk people through it, because that kind of went a little fast. Your saving throws are going to be your modifier. Um, that we've already figured out, right? That's the, you have your score minus 10 divided by 2, that little plus you have. So your saving throws are going to be directly, basically transplanted onto that. Now, where all the pluses that she was talking about comes in, for her class, it says that she has proficiencies in saving throws, constitution, and charisma. So that means that that little constitution, that proficiency bonus we talked about earlier, that plus 2, she's going to add a plus 2 to those saving throws. So that means instead of having a five which is what it would normally be she would have a seven because she's adding her proficiency bonus to that so that means on that little saving throw box under charisma she's going to put a plus seven um, and that means any times that she rolls a saving throw that requires charisma she's going to have a plus seven which is a level three character is pretty solid all things considered it means you can't touch me <laughs> yeah it means that she's never going to fail a charisma saving throw pretty much okay what does it want us to do next now that we filled all that in um, so we've done proficiency bonus we've done a Ability scores. We're already ahead of you players manual. Do we do the, should we do like the rest of the abilities, the skills and? Yeah, I guess we should. So skills um, are a little different or are they, this? I can't. They're really kind of the same. So that. I'm going to go and see, because you're going to add your, it's going to be your modifier flat for like that individual ability. And it'll tell you on the character sheet where it says skills and there's like a whole list of them. Um, in little parentheses, in a very faint font, it's going to say um, what it falls under. So, like, the first one is acrobatics, and that's dexterity. Yeah. So, I would add my dex... So, it would be my dexterity um, ability score modifier. So, that plus two, yeah. because I have a 14 in yeah. it. So However... Yeah, you get to be proficient in skills, which is yes. the next thing it lists. Um, so, my proficiencies as a sorcerer 
are going to be, I get to choose two skill proficiencies from Arcana, Deception, Insight, Intimidation, Persuasion, and Religion. For me, I'm just going to kind of like make a pretty basic, well-rounded character for a sorcerer. So I'm going to go with Arcana and Insight because yep. both of those are going to be like pretty helpful. Yeah. And then you can also check your race. You also have two decent scores have on that too. Proficiency bonus. We probably should have chose background already. Yeah. Um, well, that's I'm okay. Go we'll, we'll get there. I mean, we're going down the order it tells us to. Well, you just get proficiencies for it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Okay. So, because I mean, if you're just looking it up on, on the site, if you're going down the list, it shows hit points, then proficiencies. It talks about armor. We'll get to that later. It talks mm -hmm. about weapons. We'll get to that later. Tools, none. Some classes will have tools or some, yeah, some classes will have tools. We'll also talk about those in a minute. But for now, we're just going to go down the line, and you're going to pick your skills. Um, skills, again, is kind of like a flavor thing. Like, what do you want your character to be, like, extra proficient in? Um, what are they good at? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, what are they good at? Uh, it's like if you you're picked, in a group setting, and you're, like, coming across something, and you're like, who do we want to ask in the party to make this check? What did you pick? You picked Insight and what else? Arcana. Um, so for my Arcana one, it's going to be my Intelligence, which is a plus two, and then I'm going to add my yeah, Proficiency she's, bonus. Yeah, she's picked that as a skill. She's going to add her Proficiency bonus. So, so it would be a plus four. four. Um, and you can put your skills. It always helps to put your like what you're proficient in under like features and traits or on the second page of this goddamn thing. There's also another, like a lot of extra space that you can write that in. So just keep track of it somewhere. And then all of my Charisma ones are going to be a plus five, which is really... Yep. Really nice. Yep, yep, yep. Because that means at a third level, it is going to be very rare that I am going to like fail a charisma check because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that score is mm -hmm, so high. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish bubbling those in. So your hit dice are what? A what? D6. Well, they're how many D6 currently? Uh, Two D6, right? Yeah. Or three. Three, three D6. D6. Three D6. So I only say that. I'm going through on the sheet. So while she's filling that in. To the right of that big thing that says skills, you'll see it says hit dice. You'll put in however many hit dice it tells you based on your class. So for her, it says 1d6 per sorcerer level. She's the third level, so we're going to write 3d6 next to that total. Next to that is death saves. We'll talk about that when we get to our combat episode. Above that, you're going to see temporary hit points. We'll also talk about that when we get to our combat episode. Um, so we're going to wait for her to finish that out. All right. And then Done. What does the player's handbook tell us to do next? It's telling us to choose our starting equipment. Woo! Um, so under my class, it tells me my ch my starting equipment. I can yep, choose from a couple choices. different things. So the first thing I get to choose between is a light crossbow with 20 bolts or any simple weapon. I think I'm going to go with a crossbow because I'm playing a spellcaster and I yeah. don't want to be that martial. You know what we might want to do? Make do two of these episodes and have one be a martial character. We should do that. That's yeah, a really smart I idea. We should do that. We'll because, do two parts. Yeah, we'll do two episodes. Because they are so different they are, I, Yeah, I am going through that and thinking about that, and it's it's such a different thing. Because, I mean, you essentially have spellcasters and non-spellcasters, and it's completely fucking different. Yeah. Spellcasters, by the way, are a lot more complicated because you have to choose spells. Um, martial characters are like, I'm going to fucking pick a stat, I'm going to pump it up to the highest maximum, and I'm just going to hit people as many times in a turn as possible. Yeah, so we'll do part two, yeah, martial. So we'll, yeah, we'll start with a difficult one. Uh, the next one I get to choose is a component pouch or an arcane focus. I'm going to choose an arcane focus. Component pouches are, we. I don't know anyone who actually plays with components. Um yeah, I don't either, if I'm being honest. So I'm just going to straight ignore that, which is basically saying you need Eye of Newt and Tongue of Dog uh, to, to yeah, do a so spell. Some DMs that really, really get into it, um, and that's pretty much why it's there. There will be spells that every pretty much every spell has a component that comes with it. It'll say you need to have like two silver parchment and like one Eye of Toad. And if you don't have that, you can't cast it. So uh, basically, there are two different things. There's an arcane focus, which you need to cast a lot of spells. And then there are other spells that are more like rituals that require you to use components instead. Um, I have, like she said, never met a person <laughs> or a, seen a campaign where a component patch was used. Like, that could be kind of cool if you really want to do, like, a nitty-gritty, like, alchemy kind of witchy campaign. Um, but... Most of the time, just pick a fucking arcane focus and make it something cool, man. Like, yeah. everyone picks something that's kind of, like, fundamental to their character. Like, I picked, uh, for my first character ever, I picked a coin that was, like, seared into the palm of my hand um, because he had a very, like, traditionally tragic backstory. It just kind of fit the character. So my spell casting, um, my arcane focus was basically, like, this coin that his friend gave to him right before he died. 
Um, my first character also, it was kind of like a coin. It was yeah. a uh, it was a token from a carnival, from the Witchlight Carnival. Yeah. Which eventually we'll do something in that, because I know you really enjoy that. I love that yeah. setting yeah. so much. It's so sick. Maybe that's what we'll do our one shot in when Sam comes up. Ooh, that'd be really fun. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, uh, back to so, equipment. So she has yeah. choices. She's picked uh, an arcane focus, not a component patch. What's next? Uh, Dungeoneer's pack or Explorer's pack? I just went with Explorer's pack. Yep, they basically just have different uh, little pieces of equipment in them, like rope, incense, candles, uh, a book from a deity. Most of the time, the only thing that you're ever going to pull out of that is going to be the rope. Like, yeah. I've never seen someone go, I have a religion pack, and going to pull out like a Bible. Like, yeah. I mean, it kind of fits for them. You know what helps me right now? The word of the Lord. Yeah. Um, that kind of situation. And then the last one on there is two daggers. Yeah. And then you'll also get equipment from your background, but we're going to go in and do that in a little bit. Yeah. And you'll look up these um, these items and see how much damage they do. And some some campaigns and DMs are very on about weight as well, so keep that in mind. Um, I only do that when someone's like, I have 75 items on my person. And I'm like, cool, we're going to... And then you put it in a room, and then the, the DM robs you. Canonically, yeah. um, he goes, you get robbed. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, hey, it's what you get for putting it in a room. Um, the fuck does that mean? It was locked. Anyways, it's, you know, you know that, that's kind of what I'm like. Pick, the, pick like the top ten items that you like the most that you think you could fit in a backpack. Yeah. Um, so what is up next, Robert? So we've picked our equipment, which for any spellcasting class is going to be, uh, as you just heard, pretty much nothing um it also says here that you have a number of gold pieces to spend based on your class as shown in chapter five i have never done buying equipment so yeah. there are two ways you can do this you can say your starting equipment is based um you have your starting equipment and that's all you have excuse me i'm sorry or you nice. can determine how much gold you have based on your background um, and then you, I think you like roll like dice with that. And then basically what that allows you to do is you, you tell your players, okay, you have this much gold to spend based on your background. You can buy equipment or supplies before the campaign starts and you'll have those with you. I've never done that. I usually just tend to give my players like magical items, um, beforehand, which I haven't done with this campaign yet. Just I'm because. waiting on them. I know everyone's waiting for me to give them items. Cause like in the last couple of iterations, I've given everybody a, a magical item pretty close to the start and we're like four sessions in and I haven't given anybody anything except for one player who just got a fuck ton of money, <laughs> um, which always ends up fucking happening. So the next thing it says we're going to determine is our armor class. So your armor oh, class basically determines low. how hard it is to be hit. Um, so that's going to include the armor you wear, a shield if you carry one and your dexterity modifier. Not all characters wear armor or carry shields, and that's going to be based on your proficiency. So, I, as a sorcerer, do not have proficiencies in any. Yeah. Armor. Um, and the way that I've always done it is that even if you're not proficient in armor, I will let you wear it. Um, but uh, there are drawbacks to using things without proficiencies, and you can look those up. So, yeah. like, if. Uh, let's say Madison, as a tiefling sorcerer, wants to wear heavy armor, which is going to give a her choice. Like, which is going to give her like a plus six to AC. Um, I'm probably going to give her disadvantage on all dexterity based saving throws and checks, and she's not going to be able to go into stealth. Yeah, like period. Um, and that's just kind of how it works, right? I mean, it's like if if a tiny ass person who's never worn armor day in their life try to, tries to hop in if like a I in suit, real life put exactly. on armor, yeah, like it's just not you're not proficient with it. Yeah, um, but if you are proficient with armor or shields, whenever you equip those, you just get their bonuses, and then whenever like and then effects, it comes with yeah. But for AC her, is it's normal. AC is ten plus your Dex modifier when you yep. don't have anything on, so that's going to make my uh, AC twelve, which is pretty standard for like a low level spell casting. Yeah, I mean character. when you consider it could have been as low as ten. Yeah. Um. Yeah, twelve is actually above average. So. I'll take it. Yep. So without armor or a shield, your character's AC will be ten plus his or her Dexterity modifier. If you are using armor or a shield. Um, it will actually be based off of that. Yeah, I realize now we skipped past a whole bunch. Whoops. Sorry, folks. We're going to go back a couple. Um, Madison actually brought it something up earlier that I completely ignored, which I should not have done. Alignment Story on of flaws life. and backgrounds. So let's go ahead and hit our alignment, just because that's the first thing on the top of the order. What kind of a character do you want to play at Madison? Be original. Original. <laughs> I, I know you have strong choices on character alignment. Well, I have strong... 
listen, if you've all listened to the episode, we've talked about alignment and flavor, and I have very strong opinions on what alignment means, at least in real life. I understand how it applies to the fucking game, but in real life, neutral doesn't exist. Prove me wrong. You can't. Anyways, what alignment would you like to be? Thinking of what background I want to be, I'm oh, going to okay. go ahead and choose. So she's going to approach this from a different way. So yeah. she's going to start with background and work her way up from there, which makes sense. Only because the background that I'm going to choose is criminal. So I don't want to, I can't really choose lawful good. Well, you could. And that's where we, I mean, we're going to have a flavor episode. Um, or no, I think we, we might have had the flavor yeah, episode. Yeah, we are. Sorry. I have ADHD and so does she. I'm fucking out of it. I'm sick. You can tell. Uh, so... Yeah, you can do a lawful good criminal, though, and maybe do, like, um... Oh, Jesus, how would you even do that? That would be fun and difficult like, to work out. chaotic good would be, like, Robin Hood. Yeah, that was my first thought was Robin Hood, but Robin Hood's, like, chaotic good. Maybe it's, like, um, like a corporate kind of deal. Ooh! Yeah, like, your. Yeah, maybe it's like you're in it for the right reasons entirely, and you do the books, but like you definitely steal. Budget it's like, a little. Yeah, like you work the system, but only within the ways that the system can be worked. So it's like if somebody mm -hmm. patches the hole, you're not going to try and push it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I maybe like that in concept. that concept, I'm putting that concept in the bank for yeah, that's a pretty character cool. In the like future. a corporate. So I've been playing cyberpunk a lot, um, and like a corpo is like one of the backgrounds, and we've been dealing with like corporate espionage stuff in the other campaign too. So, but uh, for this character, I'm probably gonna go. I don't want to do chaotic neutral because I almost chaotic good. Let's just chaotic go, let's good. go with the Robin Hood character. That's a pretty popular yeah. choice. So, because there's not a lot of room to write yeah, background, so picking, I'm just going to once again abbreviate to if CG. If you don't have an idea for the character already, starting with your background is a great place to get an idea for the rest of your stuff. Um, you have your class, you have your whatever, whatever. So, now we're going to go ahead and go to our... Background. Background. Where the fuck is background on this? It's right above alignment. Right above alignment. Why is it up there? That's so annoying. Anyways. But I'm going to go with the criminal background. Um, and then there are variants, which is annoying. Yeah, I'm not gonna do the variants because one of the variants is spy, and I don't really feel like uh, see that that could work. Might be fun. Actually, no. Yeah, let's do a spy, yeah, um, spy which is that. only gonna change like one of the things, but that's gonna give me a pr skill proficiency in deception and stealth. So I'm gonna go back to my yeah. thing. So call back to our proficiency. So she's gonna go back to her skills on the left. She's gonna look at stealth. She's gonna add a plus two because now she's proficient. And then so she's that's gonna, do gonna the same take thing me from deception. a plus two to a plus four in stealth, and in deception, that's gonna take me to a from a plus five to a plus. Six. Seven. Plus seven. So my character is a really good liar. Yep. Um, and so it. I'm going to kind of keep that in mind later once I go to like role play this character of if I've got that high in deception, yeah. I need to remember that. Yep. Uh, for tool proficiencies, it's going to give you one gaming set gaming and thieves sets are tools. Fucking pointless, but you gaming can, sets you know, don't matter, but thieves, thieves tools, tools really do. Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to write that down. Yeah. So she'll um, put that under equipment. So you'll see an equipment section down there at the bottom. Yes. So thieves tools. Um, Basically allow you to make lock picking checks, allow you to try and open doors. Um, then they make you, for me, the way I've always done it is that you get to roll with advantage. Otherwise, you're just rolling flat. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some obstacles that I've also done where if you don't have these tools, you're rolling with disadvantage. Um, yeah. So yeah, these tools are just kind of a nice thing to have. It's not going to give me any proficiencies in language, but for equipment, it's also going to give me a crowbar, mm -hmm. a set of dark common clothes, including a hood, yep. and a pouch containing 15 gold pieces. And that's where that gold comes in I was talking about, folks, where you can buy equipment. So now... This will also lead you to the, like, the personality traits, oh, ideals, Jesus bonds, Christ. flaws, but we're going to... We talked oh, about yeah, that I in forgot. our flavor that episode. Is based on background, isn't it? I yeah. mean, I guess for this, though, we should do it just for, just for okay. the sake of doing yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So, this one, it, you so roll a D6. A I think um, so, a little bit more. Uh, criminal, yeah, keep yeah. going. What am I doing? Right there. Right oh, the, spe the criminal, specialty. criminal okay, specialty. Okay, so there's a little chart, um, and you can roll a D8 to find so, out what you are if you don't want to choose. For the purpose of this, I'm going to roll. Every um, background, by the way, is going to have tables, um, and that's going to be your specialty. So what kind of a criminal are you? Um, and then on the right side, you'll see it continues personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws. These are basically just role-playing suggestions, which if you listen to the role-play episode, or you know what? I'm getting all fucked up. If you listen to a episode where we talked about background, I think it was the flavor one. You mm -hmm. don't really have to do all this, but you can for fun. I'm going to for fun right now. So roll? I rolled a seven, which is a pickpocket. She's going to be a pickpocket. Chaotic good pick. So basically Robin Hood. Yeah. Yep. Robin Hood with magic. Robin Hood with magic or like Sick. the artful dodger. 
<laughs> um, so then I'm going to scroll down to personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, because we're going to do that for fun right Another now, because I've never done this before. D8. This one's, oh, that one is, the first one is a yeah, D8. Yeah, the first one's D8. You caught me. I was wrong. I got you. Uh, I got a two. Uh, so my personality trait is I am always calm, no matter what the situation. I never raise my voice or let my emotions control me. That's such an Maybe interesting Maybe you should start rolling these, that. Madison. So I play a quiet character. No, just so that you have, like, an idea of the character to play. <laughs> <laughs> that feels so targeted and mean to say. No, on I mean the like air. it would just give you a little bit more direction. That's all yeah. I'm saying. No, I've done that before. That's what I did for Magnolia, yeah, uh, my first fair. character, and um, I like picked ideals is next a D six. Um, you can also I like to roll two on personality traits. Oh, uh, because I think that it gives you a little yeah, bit more dynamic. There's and I no think it keeps limit it a to little how bit many more of these you can roll, folks. Because um, some of them will be contradictory, and it, I think that makes for a, a more well-rounded character. Yeah, so I rolled a six on the second, which is I don't pay ri- I don't pay attention to the risks in a situation. Never tell me the odds. Those two kind of so, go together. Yeah, calm, cool, collected, and uh, like I and I don't care about the risk. I'm so confident. Yeah. So this feels kind of like, like a an suave, like a yeah, yeah, like an ace, like a Han Solo, like mm-hmm. a yeah. never tell me the odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So then you would write those down on personality traits in a little box. Yes. Next is ideals. Uh, so I'm gonna roll a d6. Well, okay, I'm not gonna roll a d6 because if you want to choose your alignment by going background first, you could roll on this chart to give you your alignment. But because I've already chosen my alignment, some of these won't work. Um, because yeah, the ideals have... are listed under lawful, chaotic, good, evil, neutral, yeah. good. So ideals, you kind of pick whatever you want to. And we've kind so. of already decided that this is going to be a chaotic, good Robin Hood character. So my thought is probably the people one. Or no, that says neutral. Um, so I'm going to look at ones that say good and chaotic. So there's one. Charity. Called... I mean, charity. Yeah, charity. Makes I steal from the wealthy so I can help people in need. Yes, it's a good idea. Um, and bonds, then I'm going to go down bonds. to bonds. So I'm going to roll a D6 again. And this is going to tell you kind of like your familial connection. So this one is, um, I rolled a three. So something important was taken from me and I aim to steal it back. Yeah. I think uh, that works really well with the character that we've already made. And then mm-hmm. for flaws, I'm going to roll a D6. The flaws are my favorite ones. Um, and I got a one, which is when I see something valuable, I can't help but think of, about anything but how to steal it. That's so true to life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can we say that? That's so true to life. Um, I'm saying Madison is a kleptomaniac. That's all. I not hey. not like medically, just like she likes to pick things up. I d- I do listen. If I see something shiny, I'm gonna take it. Exactly. Not from like a store. I'm not ca- I'm not committing crimes. Not from a store. Never. From not a from store. a store. Just um, from like. And again, these are kind of things where like if you want to spice it up, do multiple bonds. Yeah, multiple let's flaws. do another flaw. Oh Jesus. Uh, six. I. An innocent person is in prison for a crime that I committed, and I'm okay with that. The fact that it says I'm okay with that. See, I would That's change that. Flaw. I would change that though, and say that I'm not okay with that. Yeah, because I, I think that would fit the character more. Yeah, to be like. So you can like build off of this, and so maybe now... and now you can connect those though, because the bond is. Uh, I, something was taken from me that's important, and I want it back. And your flaw now is that um, whenever I see something valuable. I can't help but think to steal it. And then the other one says that an innocent person is in prison for a crime I committed, and I'm okay with that. So my immediate thought process is, like, if I'm working with somebody to make a backstory, this is where I can jump in as a DM. Um, I would say, what if you stole something really important um, because you just couldn't help it, because you were cocky, because you were confident, because you thought nobody was going to get hurt, because you're a chaotic good character. You're like, I can take that, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to give it back to the people. And somebody innocent got put in prison because of that. And then maybe you ended up selling it before you knew. And the only way to get that person back out of prison is to, like, bring the object back. Yeah. Um, And so now part of your, like, mission is to go and track down this item that you stole that's been, like, traded over the years between criminals and undergrounds. And maybe it's now, like, the crown jewel of a kingdom that got, like, started up based on this item you stole. And now you have to go rob a kingdom of, like, its prized possession to break out this innocent person. Yeah. See, that's so where I go like with that. Fully fledged character, which yeah. is just from and like looking at the scores that we've rolled and looking at the that like, actually the sounds like a fun table. character. I might just do that. <laughs> that might be my knife throwing character. Fuck it. There you go, Robin Hood. Uh, that's like Robin Hood, but Maid Marian is in jail. <laughs> 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 okay, so we've hit our personality traits, ideals, flaws, bonds, whatever, 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 whatever. We have. Our AC, we've already determined that. Mm-hmm. Um, should we give a determined initiative by this point? I, I think like your initiative sh- is just your dex modifier. Should have. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, because now we're hopping into races. 
So your initiative, I'm pretty sure, is just going to be your dex mod. You can be proficient on initiative. Um, you can also gain expertise in initiative so that like, it improves your role. So mm-hmm. initiative is something related to combat. So the episode after this uh, will be another Theater of the Mind episode where it's all about uh, initiative and combat and so on. Well, we're going to do a martial character. Sorry, part two. Yeah, guys, I'm all over the place. Which um, maybe we'll see if... On meds and... and uh, we'll blame sorry. it on the cold meds. I haven't taken any today, so that's just I me. was giving you an excuse, man. I know, I know. Anyways, um, yeah, so eventually we'll do combat, but initiative basically means whenever a famous phrase, uh, roll for initiative, it, you're going to add that little number to whatever you roll. Um, also, under equipment, so talking about the boxes that we're filling in, you'll see GP, SP, EP, GP, PP, <laughs> PP. Under equipment, that's basically all of the kinds of currencies that exist in 5e. So pla- PP is platinum, GP is gold. Uh, e, I think, I don't know what the fuck E is. I know S is silver, I know C is copper. I very rarely, if ever, use currency. I know some campaigns <laughs> thrive on it. What the fuck do I like? Do I look like running a fucking economy? I'll say it's and my kind of a thing of like you want to es- demolish the local I'll say economies we anyways. want to like escape capitalism when you're playing a fantasy game. But then again, every character in like every campaign that I've played or like one shot even with Robert, we have all become immensely, and I mean like life changing amounts of money. I literally just had so a character get a million dollars in real life. Like, or yeah, not in real life. It, sorry, it was a thing of we were rolling how much like money. Yeah. That he was going to have. We rolled a D100. Madison he, goes, he rolled 100. That's basically like a nat 20. And I was like, well, she's not wrong. Like, And we were just going to add a, a, what, how many zeros so after? So I said add three zeros to whatever you roll in the D100. So yeah, because he, he was already a rich character. Yeah, he was already a pretty wealthy character. He was a doctor who was basically like leaving his job because his cover was blown. Yeah. A um, doctor coming from like a nepotism, like a... Well, no, actually. Political family. Well, his character, we haven't explored a lot of his backstory, but no. No? No. Okay, never mind. Jury's Nepo, baby. He's like, I've done it all on my own. Okay. And also, I have superpowers. Okay, but rich family. Yeah, rich family, just not, he hasn't. What doctor has a million dollars? He hasn't gotten into, I don't know, <laughs> Madison. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's why I assume some of it was like familial thing. money. I mean, I guess it could be. I don't. Anyways, there are some Sorry. fucking plot holes in my campaign currently. <laughs> I said, roll a D100, add three zeros. That's how much money you're leaving with. And he, I rolled it myself, and I rolled a fucking hundred. And Madison goes, that's basically a nat twenty, which it is. I don't sound like that. It is basically a nat twenty. I can't take that away from him. So I said, fine, add another fucking zero to that. And he walked away with a million credits. He just gave. Yeah, he paid a hundred thousand dollars for a car uh, to basically ditch his old one, and then just gave like a poor destitute woman who's also um, an aunt of a character uh, that he's now trying to hook up with a hundred thousand dollars to basically be like, let me live here for a few weeks. Not even live there. Park in the alley behind the. Yeah. So. Anyways, um, I think we're at this point, you you're getting into done. like picking spells. Um, yeah spells and appearance. So we can do appearance really quick. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't think we necessarily need to get into spells. Um, yeah, because spells is a whole other thing. We'll probably in our episode where we talk about magic. Yeah. Um, I'll go through and yeah. pick the spells I, I and stuff because we'll that's that. a whole separate complicated thing. Yeah. Um, so we can just do real quick since we were already talking about kind of flavor. We can go ahead and fill in. Um, what this character looks like. So tieflings yeah. are, I'm going to wait for you to pull up the page. Yeah. Yeah, tieflings are the, it, as we talked about in the race one, they're like people with infernal blood. So some type of like. Um, devil. Yeah. Not demon. Devil. Devil. Uh, devilish blood. Um, I, there are some people who argue. Self-reliant that, and suspicious. Oh my God, tieflings can only be this color. Argue with the wall. Eat shit. Uh, they're also. Uh, she's going to be, she's going to be pink. Um, yeah, mine was purple, man, you. like 100%. Um, so some of the flavor text for tieflings, not that we have to keep this in mind, um, self-reliant and suspicious. So they are a small minority mostly found in human cities or towns, often in the roughest quarters of those places. Um, they grow up in swindles, whatever, whatever. Uh, some more flavor text, infernal bloodline. Tieflings are derived from human bloodlines, and in the broadest possible sense, they still look human. However... Their infernal heritage has left a clear imprint on their appearance. Um, they have large horns. Um, they usually have, uh, well, sometimes they have tails. I've seen a lot that don't, but uh, the horns are also on every flavor, shape, form, whatever. So that's pretty much all there is to a tiefling. Um, the rest of it is all flavor stuff. They also give you some traditional names in the player's handbook, which is kind of cool. Um, so like traditional tiefling names. So 
I'll read the description. Tiefling names fall into three broad categories. Tieflings born into another culture typically have names reflective of that culture. Some have names derived from the infernal language, passed down through generations that reflect their fiendish heritage. Um, so then it gives you a list of names, male, female, and then it says virtue names, which basically mean like you're named after the um, like the, the, the aspect of the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so like art, carry on, chant, creed, spare, excellence, fear, glory, so on and so forth. Um, but then you can also just make Those up are, your own that's, fucking that's, name. That, that's just Puritan names. That's like patience, chastity, yeah. no, basically. grace. Um, that's is also funny. Tieflings also get a bad rap. So part of their flavor tax is mutual mistrust. So people tend to be suspicious of Tieflings, assuming that their infernal heritage have left its mark on their personality and morality. Um, shop eaves keep a close eye on them, and you know people don't really like to trade with them. And yeah. you know it's like gold in one hand, knife in the other. I hate how wizards... Uh, I don't like fantasy racism. I don't like me, that it's built into the game. I don't want to say anything negative about wizards or their writers. They're phenomenal people. Um, they've done a lot of great work. However, I don't like the built-in racism and like xenophobia and this race is this and this race is that. Like, I get it, but also it's just kind of... I don't know. Like, it feels shitty. I think in the in the culture and the lens that we've shifted into now... Why breed that in a fantasy setting? Yeah, when you, know? you don't have to. Yeah, like, especially when it exists so much in our world. And I don't necessarily want to see the book say nobody hates a race ever. Period. I understand that, like in a fantasy setting, especially when you're talking about tribalism and people and human beings and so on, war, greed, theft, whatever. Like it just happens. But also, you don't have to write it into the character or like into the race like traits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it feels. It just feels a little ick. ick. Yeah. And I think tieflings in every setting that I've seen them in, like they're very normal. You yeah, know, they're like just it's just people. They're people just, with horns. They're just dudes. So anyways, um, uh, now that I'm on my soapbox, um, she's written some things down here. Yes. She's one of the most, like, um, oh, how do I say this? It's not a bad thing. She's one of the most, uh, like, down to the fine details person people I've ever met when it comes to character creation. So she visualizes everything, which is really cool to see. Thank you. So uh, go ahead and read off some of the things you put down. So in kind of thinking about our, like, conversation with the backstory and, like, who this – or the personality of this character, which all – I love when that comes out in, like, building the character itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to choose uh, kind of a simple name. I like the idea of choosing, a, of, like, a name that's not a – like, not a tiefling name. Yeah. Um, so I went with Sparrow because we were joking kind of about Robin Hood. Yeah. Um, I think that's funny. It's Crystal. kind of a nod to that. It's going to mm-hmm. remind me as a player of who my character is while still being different enough that, like, it's not a straight copy. Yeah. And it's, like, a fun name. Mm-hmm. Um, so for age, I'm keeping in mind that they have similar, like, age ranges to humans. Yeah. I don't like playing older characters. We also characters. picked uh, – sorry to interrupt. I was just thinking we picked Spy. We decided we wanted yeah. to do Spy. I think part of that backstory, too, then – and this is just so off topic, but I'm so into this character now. Um, I think even further part of that backstory, maybe the spy thing is like you stole something from like your boss or like your kingdom or whatever, or your advisor. I don't know. Sorry. That was just an extra unedited yeah. detail. No, it's fun. I like details. I, like I spy. said, I'm down to the detail. I love um, envisioning things. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I imagine this is a younger character, but not so young that they are like early, like, uh, like 24, 25. Yeah, the young thief trope is, is a little too played on for me. I just like the idea of like the suaveness. Yeah. And that no, 100%. feels younger to me. Yeah. Um, so just like mid 20s. Um, Height, I wanted her to be a little... I normally play short queens. This is on the second page, by the way, if you guys are following along at home. Uh, I normally play short queens because I'm a short queen myself, five foot. Um, But I envision as a suave character, I'm like, she's a little bit taller, so like five, six. I would have even liked to have seen her be like five, nine, five, ten. Uh, That's too, like... Well, I know, I know it's to, different. She doesn't want to draw too much attention if she's a spy. But she's also very she's also confident. Peaked. Yeah, no, that's true. And like, I'll go with five eight. Um, and you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she stands out and she knows it. Five eight. And maybe she uses that. She wears heels. Much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's five eight, and, and she wears heels, yeah. so she's taller. Um, weight is weird in this. Um, it's yeah. always all over the place. It gives you like way lower weight than like what people would actually normally weigh because in this it's like yeah she'd probably weigh about like 115 pounds and that's like nothing um so i just kind of ignore weight yeah Um, whatever you want it eyes um i really love the like 
the all one color eyes. Yeah, the all black. And yeah, just all, this, all, all that. black eyes because I think those are fun. Yeah. Uh, pink skin because mm-hmm. Arky with the wall. Yeah. And like glossy black hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, to kind of round that out. So um, to talk more about things that they've put in this that I'm not a huge fan of, it talks about alignment because when you're looking at this in the player's handbook, it'll give you general light guidelines. And it says alignment. Tieflings may not have an innate tendency towards evil, but many of them end up there. Evil or not, an independent nature inclines many tieflings towards a chaotic alignment. So the chaotic, we've fallen into. It yeah. makes sense. Like, they're outcast. Well, they're not outcast, but, like, they're pushed to be independent. So, unfortunately, we have lended ourselves to that. But that's more of a backstory choice and less of a race choice. Yeah. But they also insinuate that because of their outcastness, they tend to fall more towards the evil side of things, which is just kind of annoying. Yeah. You know, like you could have just left just, it at it, independent. I mean, it goes back into that, like the, it, it's the racism yeah, thing. It's, like, it's the fantasy racism, which mm. I think there are ways that you can bring that into a world in a very intelligent and a very meaningful way. However, yeah. I don't think it's something that is particularly necessary in most worlds unless mm. it is like deeply intentional. And you also, I think, Anytime you're including something like that, you need to check with your players. You need to check yeah. with people at the table and see if that's something that they want what or are of, okay yeah, what kind with. Of a world are we playing in? Because, you know? like, I know I, as someone who's like, it, and this is obviously not the same as racism, yeah. but like, I'm a, an, an AFAB person. I'm a I'm a girl, mm-hmm. um, and I've lived my life as a girl, and I've been socialized as a girl, and all of that stuff. And I've faced, like, plenty of sexism in my real life, especially in the, like, nerdy community and in the yeah. gaming community. I mean, it's, so it's I a don't very male-saturated yeah. space and has been for quite a few years. So know? I don't want to hop into a world where this, this like, cool, fantastical, beautiful world mm-hmm. and then also have to deal with, oh, this stupid sexism. little girl. Like, And we've... There are fun ways as a DM to roll on characters that still have a little bit like touch of the patriarchy, um, yeah. as I'll call it fondly, and have it be fun. Yeah. Um, make fun of the character. Like, uh, make them a joke. Favorite characters um, was the guy from the uh, the pirate one shot. Oh yeah, uh, we yeah. had a captain, and he was just the captain, biggest piece of shit. Captain, captain Hale. Uh, captain, yeah, Dave, not the full Hale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was basically just like Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean, like a but womanizer worse. and yeah, like the yeah, but worse. But like, like it never got to a point where it was like, Okay. Yeah. Let's not. You know, it was just like the I'd like everyone, to have sex with you. Yeah. And you're it was a like a character that everyone kind of knew and already like took yeah. the piss out of. Yeah. So I think it's okay to make those characters have those, those flaws it. because like half the jokes like there was a joke about like, well, you know the only reason that you're like, you know, you got hired was because you have tits. Mm. And she was like, you don't think I know that? Yeah. You don't yeah. think I'm fully aware? Yeah, I run saying. this ship. This ship is my bitch. And so were yeah. the entire crew. They would all die for me. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, so yeah, we've pretty much done it all. Um, yeah. I mean, from here, there are different options. You can you can put there's character backstory. Which there's we already talked about. There's additional features and traits. Treasure. Well, I don't know. I even know why the fuck that's there. <laughs> uh, allies, organizations, and then spells, which we'll talk about in our combat and spells. Yeah. Uh, Because spells really aren't, I mean, they're important, but they're more important when talking about combat, so. Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, I think that's the end of the episode. Uh Uh-oh, let's see how, let's see what time we're at. I think, um. We should be, it should be a while. It's 12.26. Pretty long. See how long we were. Oh, not too bad. Now we're in 20, but we also had like a 15 minute yeah. interval where uh, mic. Mike tried to assault Madison. So I truly, we were supposed to record today, like yeah. a video, and we couldn't get a setup that worked. No. And I ended up taking it down. And I'm kind of upset that we did now because if we had I that, wish. Funny as fuck. I wish we had that on video. Um, but awesome. yeah, we're going to put a copy of this character sheet in the description um, and like, or probably link it. Yeah. Um, because we can't like plug the actual thing in there, but mm-hmm. y'all will be able to see and like kind of follow along. Yeah. Um, so yeah. With that being said, uh, we will catch you guys later on part two where we do a martial character. Um, Next maybe Thursday. I'll walk through it this time because I've never made a martial character before. So, well, I've done a, a paladin, but then in my mind, it doesn't count. So, <laughs> anyways, catch you guys later. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Table Talk. See you later. See you next week. <laughs>